What's up guys, Tommy Shaw here. In today's channel, what I'll be talking about is how to force appreciation in a business or real estate, okay? I'm going to try to explain to you why a business in real estate, in real estate can create massive wealth. And when you can understand that, you'll start to understand that creating wealth is easier when you understand the PE ratio, the multiple ratios, and everything that gives every dollar more value in a business, okay? So first of all, you need to see the business as revenues. You have revenues, your sales, it could be rent, because this is for real estate and a business. So all of this is the same thing. Okay, your rent, sales, revenues, it's just different forms of getting that money that could come inside the business. And then you have you have like the variable cost, then you have DO, which is operating expense. Okay, operating expense, I'll just put it like this. All the expenses that the, the business needs to operate, okay? Employees, uh, paying off the, the, the building, everything the business needs to operate. And then we get to this magic number, the NOI, the net operating income. And when we understand this number, the net operating income, then we start to understand that how many assets are inside that business. Say the business has a million dollars of assets and the business makes 100K per year. So this is a multiple of 10 times. This means if you wanna buy this business and get this net operating income, you're going to have to pay a million dollars to get 100K. It's also the same as if you take one divided by 10, a 10% yield. So this business, according to assets, gives about 10% yield. There's no business, there's some businesses that give you 10% if you go into commercial real estate or something like that, and it's very risky, then there's going to be a premium on the yield because the market knows that that sector is very risky. But right now, when we look at assets, how many times do you pay for rev the net operating income? It is about 5%. When, when you can get between 4% to 6%, on any asset that is considered a good return because you have to take into account that interest rates are almost to zero sometimes you could borrow at three percent minus deductions and taxes well it brings it down to almost two percent and you have a cap rate of six percent that means you have a positive leverage okay so let's just look at this in terms of every time you create one dollar in net operated income, this means you're essentially growing the value of the business. So how do you force appreciation? You need to figure out how to reduce your operating income, your operating expenses, or you can increase revenues. If you're able to keep revenues, uh, your operating expense uh, at the same level and you continue to increase revenues or sales or rents, that means it's converted almost 100% to the net operating income. So every dollar that you make in rents or revenues, and if you are able to keep your operating expense, your variable rates at the same pace, then you're able to increase this by a factor of one. Sometimes it's going to be 30%. If your margin is 30%, then you'll every dollars you make in revenues, there's going to be 30 cents that goes into the net operating income, okay? So when you know how to properly manage, you find a manager, you, you reduce the cost. So every dollar that you save or every $100,000, say you have a 10 unit property, okay? And you raise it up by $100 each a year, that's 10K. Right here in this example, that we had a PE ratio or a multiplier by 10. So that means you just added 100K in value to the property. So now let's say your business was in a sector that was very risky and you put in a pharmacy, you put in uh, uh, a grocery store, anything that has big anchors that can bring in these stable clients. Now you bought this property because it was mismanaged at 10% and now you bring it up 
to a secure location you you do everything right and you make sure you have the right tennis you do a triple net or whatever and then it brings it up to a multiplier of 20 not only that does that the NOI now you're at 110 K because you put in some good tenants you did uh, you managed it properly and now the business is considered safe your multiplier just changed to 20 so no longer is it worth 1.1 million you just force that capital or that asset appreciation by a factor of 20 now if people would want to buy your business they would have to pay 2.2 million dollars by buying this business that was already having a hard time you put in some right tenants you change how the business was being done you properly manage the property and now people look at that property and they say my god I want to have that business it's a safe investment big investors that want a 5% return because this a multiplier by 20 is a 5% return on asset remember it's not the asset that is important it's how you structure that business not because the business is giving a 5% return that the investors are making 5% return because if it's mostly debt 80% debt then you have a multiplier by two, uh, by 5 minus interest so even though this business is giving 5% big investors love these kinds of deals because they want to have something that they can buy it's already managed everything's going well and they can make money on their money and they receive fees on the management that they own on the assets so you bought this property 1 million you had maybe 250k down payment and now you sell this business 2.2 million you take back you pay back the debt which was 150k and now you have 1.50 million dollars and you had 250k so it's very easy to take a mismanagement it's not easy okay to take a mismanaged business and make it uh, uh, good but what I'm trying to say is that when you know how to force appreciation in a business it's very easy to double your money and to grow very quickly I know this may sound like it's not rational it doesn't make any sense you have to be open-minded because wealth is between your ears because if you can't understand this information it'll be practically impossible for you to become wealthy you'll have to save yourself the wealth this is not saving yourself the wealth this is buying a deal using leverage taking a business that's mismanaged putting in the right team then putting in the right tenants pharmacies grocery stores anything that's very stable a bank and then you have a lot of them and then you raise the rent you reduce operating income you increase sales rents or revenues and then you take a, a, a business that was considered very risky and now you make it stable and investors outside of it look at this business and they're like this is the business that I want to manage I want it in my portfolio I'm giving you 2.2 million and these are rough numbers because it's not a 2.2 million without capital gains you're gonna to have to pay capital gains on this and then this example let's say the land is worth 200k then you have to remember that 800k minus 2.2 million okay will be 1.4 and you'll have to pay 50% in capital gains which will deduct so you might end up with uh, 900k but it's still a lot okay Th that's why when you start to get in these games it's how much your how much was your time worth it was worth maybe two thousand five thousand dollars an hour and this is why I wanted to share this video sometimes positive news and stuff like that doesn't get transferred and when especially when you're talking about wealth not a lot of people want to talk about wealth if you look at what people want to hear most of the time it's negative stuff if the market's going to crash is this a good time is it a double dip or is it is this a falling knife 
most most of the time people are looking for negative headlines because that's how maybe they feel and they resonate with that information and what i've noticed is that not a lot of people want to go in this direction and this is why i believe that it's only one percent of the population that's able to become wealthy because they're the only one that's open-minded to hear about this information and once you hear it and you believe it and then you start to see opportunities all around you so hopefully you get you like this kind of information i put in a little bit of my opinion my knowledge that i wanted to share i do this in real estate i do this with my fourplex my sixplex uh, my commercial buildings and every time i raise rents i'm able to go and refinance take that money and put it at a zero amount so that's that for today like subscribe and i'll be seeing you on the next